dad, my father, Sidney Charles Pitt, seeing potential and after some real struggles was able to borrow money from the Midland Bank to purchase a plot of redundant land in Barton Street. He designed and built his own garage. He imported Wayne petrol pumps, especially from the USA. He built, put in a hydraulic ramp, skylighting and a showroom, and that was completed in May 1939. It had boxes of flaring geraniums along the roof, and he had a professional sign writer to put the fascia up above the, the workshop. In September 1939, war was declared, and everything disappeared behind sandbags for the duration of the war. Early in the conflict, Dad applied to join the RAF as an aero engineer, but, was denied, but that was denied to him as it was considered that the job he was due at doing to keep essential services like food, bread and other vital lorries was more important to the war effect. It was called a reserved occupation and meant that Dad had an extremely tough time for the next six years or so. In addition to working all hours in the garage, he often had to manufacture parts from scratch as no spares were readily available for the vehicles. He had two or three nights all night fire watching as well as regular duties and patrols in the Home Guard as an, and as an official military taxi driver. I have a movement order from that time in my keeping. Dad recalled years later that while working on a Brookbond delivery van late into the night, he needed to run the engine to check the repair and make necessary adjustments. Because of the blackout, he kept the garage doors closed. He nearly died of carbon monoxide poisoning and was only rescued by a passing policeman on foot patrol who heard the motor's noise and could not make anyone inside hear. Such were the pressures of the time. By this time, Mum was involved in helping to run the business, selling petrol, and these were the times when customers were not allowed to touch the pumps, let alone fill their own vehicles, and she was, did the books, particularly the dreaded petrol coupons. Both Mum and Dad speak of the hours spent reconciling metre fuel through the pumps with the coupons tendered by their customers. Every gallon had to be accounted for, as at this time sailors were dying in thousands getting oil to the USA, from the USA to the UK. Dad always tried to keep something for the RAF pilots, who were based locally, and he enjoyed listening and talking to them about the work they were doing. Next to the garage in Barton Street, there was a small tobacconist shop run by Mrs Careless. Both Mum and Dad were heavy smokers at this time. Dad was a player's man, and Mum enjoyed Craven A, which was a tipped cigarette. In the shop, with its own very special smells, hung an electric Craven A clock with its image of a black cat. It seemed that I watched the second hand of that electric clock go round and round and round for hours while Mum caught up on all the local news. For me, the word that perfectly sums up the spirit of that times was community. The area around Barton Street was filled with working class folk and my parents were a key part of that community as was my, mother, mum's, my mother's mum, my grandmother. She was Mrs Cole and she lived at the Ferns, 58 Alfred Street, Gloucester, and it was at her home and mum and dad lived after their marriage. Dad and mum often talked very fondly of those times. And I do have a vague memory of a trip with my dad in our Morris 12 car into the hills around Stroud, where dad did a Sunday paper as well as everything else during the war. While I was doing this round and following some research recently, I believe on Sunday the 23rd of July 1940, at the start of the Battle of Britain, he visited the remains of a downed German aircraft, a Junkers 88, near the village of Oak Ridge. In later years, he often remarked on the rough, unfinished casting of the aero engine and how he tried to, f but failed to obtain a souvenir from it. Sadly, uh, there were casualties, fat fatalities, and the pilot officer of the hurricane that was killed, as was one of the German uh, flyers. The war did have a profound and lasting effect on all of us who lived through those times, and I do have a few bits of paper from Dab's time f with the Home Guard, and somehow that seems to put flesh on the stories I grew up with. I recall, for instance, Mum's immediate reaction to the sound of the air raid siren used in peacetime to summon fire crews to duty. She literally turned to jelly, trembling from head to foot. This continued to happen years after the war was over. One can only imagine the impact of the experiences of those much closer to the action than Mum was. Though as a younger youngster, we saw some bomb sites used as a second-hand car lot in the town. 
I think a Mr. David Wickens had one such site somewhere near the Technical College in town and one near the India House. I'm sure that some of the bombs fell on the area adjacent to Barton Street because Mum often told me how she saw bombs following it falling from a, a German plane with horrible black crosses on it. Dad said that at the time he and the lorry driver delivering petrol to his garage in Barton Street, they took cover underneath the petrol tanker and prayed that they didn't get a direct hit. <laughs> the only bomb damage we suffered was a hole in the ceiling of my grand's house in the bathroom, just above the old blue my Ascot geezer, where a rusty garden hoe had been blown into the air by the bomb blast that had destroyed a house in Napier Street when it came back down to earth. Gran, Mum's mother and my dad were living at 58 Alfred Street at this time, and this is before they purchased a house in Upton St Leonard's. I'm not sure when we moved from Barton Street out to Upton St Leonard's, I was very young at the time, but I do remember listening uh, to the aircraft going out in the, on 6 of June 1944 and my dad telling me as we listened to the aero engines in the dark this was the beginning of the end. It appears that some 25 people were killed in air raids on Gloucester during the war and over 100 were injured including my dad with cuts on his wrist and I've still got the note from the civil defence saying this. At some point, I'm not sure when, the decision to sell Barton Street garage was taken perhaps to pay the hospital bills following my dad's attack of infantile poliomyelitis. Perhaps dad could not find or trust anyone to manage it, or put simply, enough was enough. One important part of the sale was to have a significant impact in the future, which was that a covenant was imposed on dad so that he could not open another garage business within 10 miles of Barton Street within the next 10, ten years from the date of sale. This was to protect the purchaser of the business who had paid uh, money for what we called the goodwill of the business.